Hello, Simon Jones here from hitfilm.com here with a little unofficial extra tutorial which is why it's up on my channel rather than the main channel. I just wanted to throw this up to give a little bit of extra info on this kind of effect. The uh, cool transporter that you saw in the latest episode of Film Riot. Uh, really great episode, I recommend you go and check it out. It's uh, got a cool little mini tutorial uh, all about HitFilm and hosted by, of course, Ryan Connolly, who I have... Uh, hastily cut out of the episode and paste it in here as a slightly cheesy single image. Now what I want to talk about is this particular particle effect, or particle effects in general in HitFilm, because one of the cool things is that our particle effects exist in the proper 3D space. Now what this means is that you can mix other layers in amongst a particle cloud without having to do any fancy masking or extra kind of matte work. Um, and in some other compositors that can be a little tricky because your particle effect will actually be rendered to a 2D plane, which then makes things a little bit trickier. But uh, as you can see, as I just move around here, you've got these particles whizzing around in 3D space. We have our image layer of Ryan Connolly here, and the particles are all around it. Some are in front, some are behind. It just kind of works in 3D space as you would expect. Now with a particular effect like this, where you have the particles moving around in a kind of orbiting circular motion, this is particularly useful because sometimes the particles are in front, sometimes they're behind, and you don't want to have to worry about trying to create a mat, you just want it to work. And the thing about hit film is that it kind of exists and works like you would expect this kind of thing to work if you were somehow actually filming it in real life. If we just switch back to the active camera, you can kind of see what's happening. So if you try and follow an individual particle with your eye, like this one for example, you can see that as it moves around it's in front and then as it goes around behind his head it will disappear behind and that's the case with all of these particles. Nice and easy, I haven't done anything special to set that up all I've done is physically put the Ryan Connolly image layer in the middle of all the particles. If we switch to this uh, alternate view of the particle effect, this is a much simplified version with fewer particles and they're nice and chunky uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So you can see they're going behind, they're staying in front and uh, the 3D space just kind of does what you expect it to do. But the problem, of course, is that these particles don't look like how we actually want our particles to look. We want them to be glowing and have more of a kind of transporter beam kind of effect. And this is where things get a little bit tricky, because traditionally to grade a particle effect like this, what you'd probably do is you would take it and convert it into its own composite shot, which you would then embed into the main shot. Um, but as soon as you do that, you lose the 3D element. Um, so if we just uh, actually go through and do this, we'll turn this into a comp by clicking the Make Composite Shot button. There we go. And you can see we now have our particle effect isolated here, which means we can now grade it however we want. So I'll stick a grade layer on, and let's just slap on a glow. I'm just going to do this really roughly, just to uh, give the general impression of how it works. So uh, I'll just drop the threshold down, bump up the intensity, and then just change the colour a bit. So that looks you know, kind of like what we're going for. Uh, looks cool, but if we go back here you can see that the comp has now become a 2D layer. So we're now back to the problem that you'd have in other programs, which is that our particles are just sitting on top of Ryan. Um, you've lost that kind of 3D interaction. And, you know, you could move this layer below Ryan, but then they'd all be behind Ryan. So how do you get it to look like it's properly interacting in 3D? Um, well, that's where there's a little trick you can do, which is rather handy. Uh, yeah, you can see here, there's no particles in 3D space anymore. It's essentially as if you've rendered them out to a separate element. Um, and you've lost the benefits of working in that kind of unified 3D space. Uh, which is a bit sad, and we don't want that. Um, so, let's take a look at how you can create a custom mat to take care of this. Uh, I'm just going to switch around, and uh, here we have a different version. This is a slightly fancier version, and if you look closely... Um, we can actually see that where Ryan appears, we get this kind of shadowy shape. It's kind of hard to see, but if you look closely in the middle of the particle cloud, you can see there's this kind of dark outline. This actually represents where your layer is going to be. Um, we can see if we toggle it off, there are the actual particles that are behind it, and then they're occluded by this shape. And this shape is actually the Ryan layer creating a kind of procedural automatic mask. And the way it's done is you simply have the Ryan layer like this. You can see they're all properly in 3D like we had before. Um, but what we do is we do a very, very simple bit of grading. Uh, so yeah, here we go. You can see 
fully 3D, as we were before. This is a duplicate comp, so it's a separate comp where we're doing this. And then you can use the simple color correction wheels, uh, and we'll just drop down the exposure all the way down, turn that on, and it means that it goes completely black. So it looks like it's disappeared, but it is actually still there. It's just totally black, uh, acting as a kind of black mat against the particles. So then we can grade the particles like that. But the ones that are supposed to be going behind Ryan, or your actor if you do this properly, are disappearing behind it. Uh, so now if we come back here, I'll shut off that one, turn on the embedded comp containing the particles that also have the mat, and uh, you can see that we now have the proper effect, and uh, you can see that we can just set this to add, that gets rid of the black, keeps the bright nice particles, and uh, as we go through, you can see that when the layer appears, the particles properly disappear behind it still. It's a bit of a trick, but it does actually work. Um, and it's all because the mat is built into the effect. Uh, so yeah, those particles are properly disappearing behind, but they're also graded in the way that you want. Um, and this obviously is just a really quick, rough version using a still image, but you could do it with a video. That would work just fine. You don't have to do anything extra. It would just With this particular technique, it would just work. Um, yeah, so that's all there is to it. You can see I've also thrown on some auto light flares here to make it a little bit fancier, a bit more, you know, J.J. Abrams. There's been some talk about how he quite likes light flares. Uh, anyway, so hopefully that's a useful technique. Um, there you go, go and check out the Filmwright episode, and uh, I'll see you next time in a more official tutorial. Goodbye.